Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. Antoine. You are tuned into another episode of Access Granite. Um, hope everybody um, survived this crazy heat wave that we've had over the past three or four days up here in the DMV area. Um, I am still without an air conditioner. For those of you that remember me talking about this a couple of weeks ago, well, not a couple of weeks, about a week and a half ago, um, I am still without a daggone air conditioner, um, <laughs> but help is on the way. Um, this home warranty thing that we have, they do everything that they can possibly do to keep from having to actually purchase you or get oh, you to, uh, without a daggone air conditioner, get a, uh, you know, a new air conditioner, but we're going to keep fighting and beating them down. Um, Shout out to my sister, Nina, the original party girl. I see her um, in the back. So as soon as she gets all the eye boogers out, and as soon as she gets the crust, rub right here, Nina. Nina, rub right here. <laughs> my sister, Nina, the original party girl. Yeah, I bought you in being bad, as usual. <laughs> What's going on, sis? Everything. Everything. Um, I was just saying, y'all still don't have no AC. I got a new one. I got the portable kind. Uh, yeah, the portables. I mean, they're fine and dandy, but you know, we need the we need the central thing popping off. And uh, I'm not all over the house, so this works for me. Yeah, like I was just telling them, when you have these home warranty things, man, they do anything and everything that they can do uh, to keep from actually. Hey, <laughs> I have no idea, but they do anything and everything that they can possibly do, man, to keep from replacing your items, even though they advertise that if we come out and we try to fix it and we can't fix it, we'll replace they it. Problem. Yeah, they lied. And it's going to cost us $700. So I'm going to hit you I'm, up. I'm, I am so happy that my friends are fortunate and blessed enough that they can take that $700 hit. Um. I didn't say I could take the hit. I just said it was going to cost us. <laughs> it's either, take the hit. It's, either uh, it's either pay the $700 or deal with uh, July, August, and September. In yeah, Baltimore. this is last no last week. Yeah, really? you, you know that that's not an option up here. So anyway, what's been like, what's been going on? Like happy belated birthday to baby girl. You know that's what her family calls her. The in-laws call her Baby Kai. Yeah, that's, that's Baby Girl. That's Baby Girl. That's the stripper um, name. How, <laughs> how, how was the party in the jungle? It was really, really nice. Everybody had their little cat ears on, um, their whiskers. It was an OPG production, and she had a blast. I was telling, I was telling our guest, uh, we were talking off air, and I was telling her that your nickname is OPG, the original party girl. And I believe that you you gave yourself that name, but I believe that you were really born with that name because you are the like, yeah, you are the 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 official party technician. I ain't even tell her the fact that you can marry her and you know all of that other stuff. <laughs> and and you know. And now that I am the resident wedding officiant for Blues on the Water, LaFonte Blue. Did you tell her that? On. Are you serious? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Now all we gotta do is just get you to that point where you can do the divorce proceedings and all of that, and you just got the whole, you know. The well, one proactive tip: I actually can do your marriage counseling, so we can kind of avoid that. Now, there's weddings that I don't take because uh, I know y'all ain't gonna make it. So, okay. okay. You refer them to additional counseling when you run into that situation. You refer them, you refer them to the professionals. <laughs> right, right, right. Or somebody else will just marry them. I'm, I'm kind of sensitive. I like long-lasting relationships. Even though it's a business, I need for you to stay together. Yeah. There's my brother. He was over my house today talking about he was sweating here. Get out of here, man. You weren't sweating in here. But, um, it was not this week. It really was. I mean... This Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And, and we're fortunate that we have window units, but these window units, when the house is absorbing so much heat and humidity, the window units don't do much unless you're sitting right in front of the window units. So, Can I borrow one for my car? 
<laughs> I do have a new addition to the fleet, the 2016 Ford Explorer. But my car, the Accord, costs five dollars for me to do the gas all the way from west to east every day. So that Explorer is about thirteen to fifteen dollars a day making that trip. So I had to make the sacrifice: heat or no heat. Well, again, it's July and August coming up, and this is Baltimore, and you know it swelters in those months. So if whatever you had, all this. Have you had to do to get you some AC while you're driving? Because that driving with Drop the window down, that driving with the window down doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. Drive past all four windows in the sunroof and do about sixty-eight to eighty-eight. Depends on where you at. That that don't help because you got to slow down eventually. So you do. I noticed that the new thing is people just straight up run red lights from the right lane. So something's trending that we're not aware of. That's, that's not. That? That's not new because I do it myself. But anyway, <laughs> moving on. Um, I gotta give a big shout out to the Global Hit Squad, um, my boy Mike Mike Wilson, and all of the people that put together that event last Thursday when I got to see my man Beanie Siegel. Shout out, yeah, I know you're not a hip hop here, so you don't understand, but oh, who that is? I know you're a groupie. Yeah, I, was pretty, I was I was pretty much in groupie mode because that's that's my guy. You know what? I, I like Beanie because Beanie doesn't compromise who he is as a as an artist just to try to sell records. You know what I mean? Right. He's been through so much. Um, he's lost a lot of weight. Um, his voice is definitely a different, uh, a bit different because he got shot a few years ago, and I think something happened with his lungs. So he has like a really raspy kind of, you know, breathe heavy as he's rapping kind of voice. But it was it was just good to see him um, in that element. We actually saw him a couple of years ago when he was down at G10, which was I thought the craziest place to have Beanie Siegel. But he fit right in down at G10 <laughs> because you know he was that was in his element. But um, yeah, he 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 did a great job, and we had uh, several Baltimore artists that performed um, that night and really did a great job as well. So I just want to give a shout out to all of them. Um, and this is a monthly event that they do. Um, I think it's called Rock the Mic Thursdays or something like that. And uh, they do this every month. And I know next month or the month of July, because it's you know July already, um, their feature artist is going to be Jewel Santana um, from the dip set, dip set. So I will definitely be in the building because I believe that that is the event that DJ King Ray will also be performing at. His first time on stage as a rapper in about 25 years. But he's... Uh, cool. DJ King Ray. Oh, okay. okay. He's gonna be, yeah. That should be interesting. I, I actually didn't know until probably last year that he used to MC and apparently he's really good. And you know, this this pandemic and all of the stuff that he's gone through has kind of relit the fire and let him get back in his creative bag. And so yeah, he's performing and um I know he has a couple of special people uh that are gonna be in the building that I'm not gonna talk about, but yeah, I'm def definitely looking forward to that, man. And that was my first time at this little venue called The Garage. Um, I, I, I really like that venue. I, I like the setup. It's on, Charles um, Street. It's on uh, da, 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 Lafayette. It's on Lafayette. In Charles, yep. yep. They do a lot of house events here. Yeah. Um, really nice. Uh, Ambiance. Yeah, really nice, you know, intimate setting. When the lighting is right, you feel like you, you know, Somewhere, and, yeah, there was a lot of 2020 ish kind of stuff going on there. Um, yeah, you couldn't you couldn't breathe without smelling. I mean, 420. I said 2020. There was a lot of 420. Right. I was like, what is that? They could see real good. <laughs> a lot of 420 ish activities going on. Um, but it was just a real, it was a real amazing atmosphere. And one of the guys that got up, um, right before Beanie Siegel came on, he was talking, and he was talking about the atmosphere and how cool everything felt. And he said something that was really profound. He was like, this is what Baltimore is supposed to be. We're supposed to be able to come out, you know, and, and, and all of these different kind of events and, and just it just be just one big party. And then we leave and we don't get home and, you know, hear about somebody being murdered. We don't hear about no fighting and all of that kind of stuff. And I can honestly say um, there was nothing even close to resembling any kind of drama or anything there. And that place was packed. 
there was every bit of 250, close to 300 people there. And it was an absolutely amazing time. So shout out to my city. As y'all know, we get a little crazy sometimes, but yeah, that's that. You got anything else before we get Biz Marquis? Did I talk about? Biz Marquis. Um, yeah, man, stop spreading rumors. Stop spreading lies. Oh, man. The person, people are quick to try to release hot news before it's released. Um, so I get it. But then they're like, well, research before. Like, if I saw it on TV or saw it online, nine times out of ten, I'm going to believe that. Well, what, I'm supposed to research it? Or how does that work? When Michael um, Jackson died, did I research it? No. I mean, no, like, we as people, that's how we get our information from media. So... But, you know, my, my thing about that is, like, from what I understand, the, the person that did the initial the initial tweet um, is somebody that really could have and really should have. And I can't remember what the person's name is, but they probably had the ability to really get a really good confirmation before they put that out there. Because, you know, this is social media. When you have thousands of followers and you hit send you know what I'm saying? Everything else from that point is going to be a snowball effect. You know, well, so we're in the media industry, like every time you get a, a something, a blast, do you share or do you research it or do you not share? It? I, I have sources that I go to that I believe are, are reliable sources um, gotcha. before, I, before I do anything, before I even put it on Facebook. Like I, I got to go to like a, a reliable media source. Because I don't have any direct contacts with people where I can call up and say, yo, is Biz really dead? You know, or whoever. Right. And I, I just I just feel like, again, because with social media, things are so instant. Once you hit that send button, there's no bringing that back. You know, you can delete the tweet. But by the time you go to delete the tweet, 500 people might have seen it all day because that's all they do is sit on Twitter. And, you know, and again, once you send it, then they're going to retweet it. And their followers are going to retweet. The next thing you know, you got five million people, you know, sending wrong information out. And um, so I don't share so, it all. Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I don't do. have time to do the research, and because it's me saying it, the backlash from releasing something that ain't right is a little bit more harsh than if you were right. Exactly. You know. So, so for me, the first time I see that information, if it's not from one of those sources that I deem a reliable source, I go to those reliable sources first. And I might even need two or three of those reliable sources to, you know, confirm it before I put it out there. But, you know, his, his parents, his, his family, you know, came and they they shut it down. They were like, he's still alive. He's still under doctor's care. Um, we don't know his condition. You know, we know that he's been going through this this for probably the better part of like two or three years now. And um, it got serious at one point. He definitely was hospitalized. And. You know, just continue to pray for the person, man. But if you don't know for sure, man, don't 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 put that out there. Well, I learned today that TMZ is a is a reliable source. I didn't know that. TMZ is pretty reliable, and TMZ is like everywhere. You know. Yeah, I didn't know that. So I mean, I knew they were everywhere, but I I thought they were sensationalizing stuff too. Yeah, so and they, they are our resources. Yeah, and I and I think in the early stages of TMZ, I think that they did have that reputation of being, you know, kind of like a gossip kind of site, like they ain't quite know, right. kind of a and kind of a shock value, you know, kind of thing. But over the years, um, and, and and when I tell you that everywhere, like when people pass away, like they're outside the hospital before, you know what I mean. I think they got like, you know, connections in the hospital. They got like undercover nurses and all kind of stuff. But going you get on. money for a story. If you call them and they take the story, you get some sort of reward. Like my phone the other night in the club. Uh, get it, got it good. G3 says that they are ran by lawyers, so they definitely fact check. Thank you for that information. Didn't know that. But and yeah. they know people. Yeah. Yeah, they know a lot of people. But anyway, um, enough of that. You have any any announcements, anything coming up good that we need to know about before we get into the guest who is being ever so patient with us right now? No, I'm not going to hold her up one more minute. You got Just check me out on my social media platforms and you'll see what's happening. Kind of. I'm moving at lightning speed. So sometimes I don't have time to share what I'm doing. I'm still in that private sector with the party. 
So on that note, what is your social media that they can reach you? Uh, the Original Party Girl on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google. No. Yep. All of it. Nope. On Instagram, it's just Original Party Girl. Remember I told you I put the Original Party Girl. And I no, the yeah, yeah. Original Party Girl everywhere. Yeah. Um. I don't know if you would ever consider like looking into getting that name copyrighted if you could, but you might want to because there are a lot of OPGs floating around, and you know. Really, me and me and me and Casper fought about that a couple of years ago. There is a lot. There's one only one Baltimore's exclusive cele celebration technician though. That's what I would copyright. Well, it's only one. It's something because there, there's a lot of that out there. But anyway, how long can I be a girl? So I was kind of, mm, I don't know. Uh, you, I mean, you weren't a girl when you took the name. Well, you know, little kids think it's original because they think I was at the first party that Jesus was at. I believe you were at the Last Supper. You might have been I at the first supper. He was. I probably were. You might have been at the first supper. <laughs> See, you got jokes? That's why you hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too cool to be hot, baby. I'm too cool to be hot. Damn, Damn. Cheap show <laughs> I'm glistening. I need. Yes, and you're red. I am a makeup person come over today and, you know. You look like a little filter. You all flushed. You're going to make me go get a towel. Anyway. <laughs> but you like to play, cousin, man. Good to see you. I feel like we haven't seen right. you. Every, t every time I come on here, and I was, I was telling Robin this earlier, like every time I come on here, I feel like we haven't been here in a while, even if it hasn't been a while. It's just because we're not. We don't have a week. Then that's when that kicked in. Exactly, that's what it is. So, um, our guest tonight, she goes by the name of Robin, and I'm saying it now, Roots Jones. And um, she's a nurse. But she's also a director. She's also a writer. She's also a producer. And she has an amazing project um, that she put out. And I came across this as she was doing an interview on Instagram. For somebody who, if that dude don't come on up here and be on my show, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw two, throw two to the bop, bop, bop. <laughs> but um, and, and and as soon as I saw this, I said that I needed to um to reach out to her to bring her up here because I think that this is uh, we all know what we went through last year with the pandemic and um the frontline people, man, the the nurses and the doctors and all of those people, man, that were like literally daily. You know, working with, um, you know, COVID patients, um, the stuff that they saw, the stuff that they had to go through, the hours that they had to work and all of that kind of stuff really um, gave me a whole different respect than I had already had for them. So we're going to start out playing this trailer. And then after this is over, we are going to have our sister come up and show some love. So let's get into this real quick. Twenty twenty, the year of the nurse show. Might work if I hit play, right? There we go. I don't think people will ever be able to grasp what New York was unless they were there. To walk down the ER and see stretchers in the hallways. And you don't know if patients are alive or dead. It took a couple of weeks to realize how people presented. What you found out is that you can predict who was going to die. And I'm not talking about just nurses. I'm talking doctors. I'm talking environmental staff, case managers, social workers, people out because they're sick with this. So my fear was, am I next? A lot of those nurses will die from this because they do not have the appropriate equipment. And then came the, wow, we were the most trusted profession. We thought we were the most loved as well. For Black people, two pandemics collided. On May 25th, 2020, the Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin killed George Floyd. All of this stuff has been going on for decades. The only difference is that it's being filmed. It is very difficult to deal with the pandemic 
and the Black Lives Matter movement. Ahmaud Aubrey, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd. We've all had to face the difficulties that led up to, to this movement. People do not realize how mentally and physically exhausted the profession is. Mental health for me right now is hidden behind a smile and a happy face. I'm quick to tell people, oh, you need to go see somebody. You know, they got medication for that. And meanwhile, I'm sitting here suffering in silence. Oh, shoot, sorry again. And um, it's funny, as I'm sitting there watching that, I thought back to our uh, show that we did about a COVID conversation. And, um, you know, we had some, some frontline people on that show. And, you know, me having a wife that, you know, was kind of like on the front lines during that time. Um, like I said, man, I just had like a whole different kind of respect for those people now and I applaud everything that they've done. And even though we're kind of out of the woods now, we're still not out of the woods. So they still have to continue to be in there on a daily basis dealing with them. So I definitely want to commend them. And we're going to bring our sister in, Robin Roots Jones. Hey, hey, how you guys doing? Hello, welcome. welcome. Access Granted, how is everything going with you? great right now. So I'm in a good place. Um, it's funny, I was listening to Nina. I just got married like three weeks ago. So oh. I was just cracking up when she she was saying what she doing. Then you say, yeah, if you get the divorce part and the cows, and I was like, don't go there. Right. That ain't in my, in my, my, my ceremony. <laughs> you know what? I, I got to come out to one of those ceremonies one day, but we're not going to get into that. <laughs> Congratulations on your marriage. Yes, your definitely, unity. definitely, congratulations. Thank you so much. Yes. Three weeks, three weeks, man. Yeah, we you still on your honeymoon. Maybe oh. we should come back. <laughs> I've been putting people off, so I'm, I'm back on the grind now. We got to get this done. <laughs> In the midst of all of this, you found time for some, some joy. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's why I say I know he truly loved me because it's been a hectic time with COVID and making this um, film project. And he proposed doing the project and then we got married before, it, you know, I released it. So it was meant to be. So um, just tell us a little bit about yourself before we actually get into the movie. Well, I'm from originally from Tampa, Florida. I've been in Richmond about 33, 34 years. And I've been a nurse for over 30 years and really just um, got into film about five years ago. And it, it's amazing how they marry well together because in nursing, we're always trying to, um, you know, help people to reach their goals and different challenges that we have and just educate people as a whole. So with film, I found it to be a better platform to educate and also inspire and then work with people that have a story that could possibly, you know, change somebody's life, impact things, and just make an awareness. So um, getting into film has been one of my greatest decisions. And um, I've done a lot of projects that have really um, won a lot of film festivals. And I uh, have three projects that actually is on Amazon Prime. So um, for a nurse, I think that's pretty good. <laughs> oh, you, don't have to, you don't have to give us the names of these projects because I'm an Amazon Prime junkie, especially since I've been teleworking. <laughs> Well, I was laughing when you said you want to get this particular person on your show, uh, Trey Cheney. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to make sure that happens because uh, we've been working yeah, together please. a couple of years. And yeah. um, Truthless, you know, I worked on that project with him. Yeah. And, and, and before we get in, before I, I, I don't mean to cut you off, man, but I, I got to give a big shout out to Trey. Um, I, I first discovered him when he was, you know, in Baltimore on the wire, of course. Yes. That's cool. And I'm, I've kind of been following him ever since. And I, I really respect this this guy's grind and his momentum. hustle. <laughs> Everything that he's doing. Yeah, the new the new mm -hmm. video, Momentum, and all of the stuff that he's mm -hmm. doing. And um, I actually had a chance to meet him here a few years ago mm -hmm. when he was doing a, a, a tour of different schools. Um, He came to Baltimore. Um, And I had an opportunity I to meet him. And I you know, took pictures with him and everything. He's a really good guy. 
but it's it's been murder trying to get him up on this show. And the last time I talked to him, he was like, I can I can give you 15 minutes. I'm like, bro, we can't do 15 minutes. I got too much stuff I want to talk about. <laughs> That's 15 <laughs> questions. I can do it. That's 14. Yeah. He's he's okay. he's on a roll. And it's funny, um, a lot of the people I've done projects with, I've never met him face to face. And he's one of them. We've been working together over two years, but We've never met in person, but we've been working behind the scenes. And, um, you know, he told me a little bit about you. And he was actually, he did the Momentum um, release this weekend up in um, D.C., well, Maryland area, but I couldn't make it up there. So he's he's on the go. So I'll be definitely saying, hey, you got to make this happen. Give him a little nudge and say, get a man out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's Some on the road. Everybody is tuning in on, on YouTube and, and Facebook Live, too. But go yeah, ahead. there's a go. lot of the nurses that's in the project as well. Yeah, awesome. Hi, Salute. Thank you for your service. Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so, what made you? What What made you want to go into nursing? Wow, um, I took care of a sick aunt when I was like in high school, and um, she had emphysema, and it was you know back in the eighties, medicine was so different, and especially for African Americans when we didn't have you know the funding to do you know to get certain treatments that other people could afford. So she had a lot of health issues with her heart and everything and um, needed dialysis. And we just back then, a lot of that wasn't covered under um, different insurances. So um, I had that experience and I just felt like I needed to, um, you know, do more. So I got into nursing right before she passed away. And um, I've been on a roll ever since because there are so many um, things that I didn't understand about medicine when I was young. And I felt like I needed to learn more so I could be an asset to the community. So got into nursing and never looked back. Let me ask you this. Okay, go on. Um, hold on, let me let me ask this. this is, <laughs> let me, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but, oh, You're raising her hand. <laughs> I'll be I'm right sorry. with you. I'm sorry. It just been sent me, and I wanted to get this out. Um, because again, I have I have a wife that works in the in the um the healthcare field. Um, but she's a social worker. And I know that my wife, um, she really, it's really hard for her to not get caught up oh, yeah. in a lot of the dealings of, you know, the day-to-day the -day stuff. Um, how hard is it for you, you know, as a nurse, um, you know, seeing the things that you see on a daily basis and especially during this COVID time, like how hard is it for you to just kind of like separate, you know, and is there anything that you can do to separate? Well, we have a saying, once a nurse, always a nurse. So it's hard to separate, you know, when you leave the patient, you know, and they're, they're still critical and you're headed home to be with your family. You're thinking about them. Did, did you do this? Is so-and-so going to do that? You're always connected to that patient. And so sometimes you find yourself calling back, checking, you know, did you remember to get the labs? How was the labs and all of that stuff? So um, it's, it's, a, it's a calling. It's a love for nursing. And a lot of times you're connected to the patient. If not, you know, for me, you can't give good care. You look at everybody's like a family member to you because it could be sometimes you're taking care of someone that's a reflection of you, a workaholic, you know, somebody that don't really get no rest, don't ever go to the doctor. They're so busy. They entrepreneur full time. Then you're taking care of them and it kind of is a reality check. So it's hard to separate. A lot of times I tell people my nursing career started taking care of um, people in a nursing home from the Holocaust. That was one of the most powerful times for me because um, I learned a lot of history. So in nursing, I really enjoy talking to these people, just, just hearing their story. Because when you take care of people that's on the ventilator, I never get to meet them. So I have to pull from the family, you know, tell me about your dad. You know, and they tell me things about them. I'm already taking care of them, trying to dialyze them. My specialty is renal dialysis. and But I don't know the patient from the kids there and the wife there i you know i encourage them to share and i and i can't imagine taking care of a patient and then like you know you leave and go home and you come back for your next your next shift and that person's gone like that's i, I get too close to people you know what i mean so that that would and do it on a consistent basis it's really hard but nina i'm sorry i cut you off earlier what were you gonna ask or say <laughs> Hi, Robin. Just wanted to thank Hi. you for spending the moment in time with us. Of course, I want to know so much. And this show isn't big enough for the whole entire conversation that I really do. <laughs> so I'm going to take some chips. How long were you a nurse? Um, about 33 years. 33 years. Did emphysema turn into COPD? I don't hear, hear that word anymore. 
That's that's interesting. You said that a lot of times the COPD you go back and there's some emphysema in there, but back in the day it was just emphysema. And gotcha. you know, we thought back then people that smoked a lot got that barrel chest. But my aunt actually worked at a laundry factory that didn't have the guidelines that they should have, so the chemicals caused her to get emphysema. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, when you went into writing um, your projects, uh, was it because you wanted to educate or because there is a, a financial piece in there? See, now we have Prime TV. I'm like, oh, that's how she can get paid from doing that. But was that your entry point or what you were thinking or more awareness? Well, just, just being honest, which has never been financial because I always um, did projects because people... I've, I've done a, a lot of executive producing when you put up the funding for the project. And I always was inspired by people's stories, but they, they were at that place. They couldn't get it finished because they needed more funding. And um, for black film writers, it's hard to get funding. And so I started investing in a lot of people. I invested in a story. I invested in a person. I looked at their work ethic. As far as um, my project, 2020 Year of the Nurse, that came about from a, um, a place of not knowing what to do because we were in a pandemic, people were dying. We didn't know how to um, comfort families. We didn't even know what we were doing until CDC was giving us guidance. So I started, you know, logging everything. And then my nurses were coming to me tell, telling their story because we were afraid. They were afraid They're on the front line and they were afraid to go home and be exposed to their husbands and their kids. So I started just saying, hey, what can I do? So I kind of decided to do a project in real time and capture what was going on, how they felt, what was going on with organizations and how they were managing it. And also with leadership at the time, which you guys know it was different. So we couldn't really see behind the veil what was going on. So it wasn't about money. I would say that to you. It was really about trying to help the nurses to stay in nursing. This is the scariest we've ever been about our practice because we were right there, which we, you know, I've been in nursing so long. I've seen, been in it when AIDS first came out. We didn't even have gloves when it first came out. We were doing, you know, so we had to position ourselves to protect ourselves then. So now to be in this pandemic, you know, a lot of nurses died. A lot of nurses retired early. And a lot of people made decisions based on their family because, um, you know, people lost a lot of friends and family and we were giving it all we, we had, you know, but it wasn't enough. Okay. So you have two other projects that were before the 2020, is that correct? Um, I have about 13 projects. Oh, uh -huh. okay. Yeah, 20, 2020. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Three of them are on three Amazon Prime. Watching? Okay. Three, three of them are on Amazon Prime. That's, that's where gotcha. they came from. Yeah. Gotcha. What are the three on Amazon Prime? Let's get that okay. out. It's Truthless, and that one is with Trey Cheney, and then Courage to Stay In, and also The Turnaround. And The Turnaround was my first project I ever got involved with, and I fell in love with film, and I've just been collaborating with people all over the country. They'll, you know, see my Facebook page, see some of the projects, and whether they want me to help, you know, be an executive producer or a producer, or to just actually collaborate with them on the project itself. It, it's various things that I've been doing and um, nursing has prepared me for all of it. I tell anybody, I, I did not go to school for film, but I um, feel like it's important to capture the real story. And depending on who's writing the story, it could be their life story or something that they've experienced and they want to share. Because sometimes when you're going through stuff, you think it's, it's just you. But once you really get out there, you realize it is a community that can help you do this. So doing these interviews is great because um, people are, under, it's a lot of people still dealing with COVID. So are all three of them about COVID or nursing? No. Mm -mm. Okay. My, yeah, the, the great thing about what I'm doing is it's very diverse. And a lot of filmmakers are telling me you're going to find your niche. But I find I found a person with great work ethic, and I listen to their story. And being in nursing, I think I position myself well financially. So if I'm able to support them to get their story out there, that's what I'm all about. I, I tell myself, you know, I'm an investor. I invest in people, I invest in places, and I invest in things. So uh, the stock market, real estate, 
And then the film industry has really been great because I've met some amazing film writers. Amazing. Are you still practicing nursing? Yes, I'm actually um, in the education department where I um, educate new nurses coming in and physicians and also mentor um, nurses that are getting their bachelor's degree, master's degree, nurse practitioner, and helping them find positions within the community. So I'm um, very active with that. And when we did have church, I um, served in my church here in the nursing ministry, which we missed the most because community is what's happening because of people not having insurance. So you're able to really kind of run a mini clinic trying to make sure they're, you know, eating right, taking their meds right, making sure their blood sugar is good. Just the things that, you know, we need. Gotcha. You're like the president. Every once in a while, Twan will give me a present. A guest that I really, really want to talk to. So if I move, Twan, you can, Twan, you can leave, Twan. Go ahead and get some air upstairs. I'm going to be good with her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you kick them, really good. You kicked the island. He, he would never leave me alone. He playing. So the, he, you really spoke highly of you before you came. And, and I was excited when he described you perfectly. That's why I was cracking up. Yes. Trust and Robin, as much as I don't want to be, I'm attached at the hip for life. Because because so. but his hip is 6'3", and mine's is five <laughs> feet, so it's weird. <laughs> so talking about your current project, you said you know a lot of nurses die. And in my mind, I was like, I don't know that. So we don't have privy to things that's on the media. They don't show us the whole picture. So according to what you said, like nurses really died. Doctors really died. Yeah, I was listening to you guys talk about, um, you know, research and, and looking up facts and stuff. And that's the thing that really pushed me to do this project. I felt like nurses were undervalued. They weren't really um, honored yeah, during this time because, you know, we went to nursing school. We took an oath to do no harm. But when this pandemic hit, organizations, it took a while for them to position themselves to protect us as well as all the other ancillary staff, you know, the housekeepers, dietary people, the physicians, social workers. And it took a while. And then once it just once we found out what we needed to do, then we had to um, lay out a process to get supplies to everybody. But during that time, people people died and nurse nurses passed away. But um, we just had nurses week in May. And that's when I um, released my trailer, the first day of Nurses Week. And throughout the month of May, they said we would, uh, you know, we would celebrate Nurses Week. But my nurses did not get saluted for the price they paid. And I just felt like I wanted to push this project to first honor the nurses that have passed away, taking care of any and everybody. Because a true nurse, you know, we take care of, I I've taken care of murderers in my career. I've taken care of um, people that have abused kids. I've taken care of people that had different beliefs that I didn't have. I took care of everybody in the bed because when I come in, I leave those things at the door. I take care of everybody the same way. But as nurses have been dying, there are younger nurses that are leaving because they're afraid of this pandemic. It's not over. People think it's over. There's a new variant that's coming and we're not, we, we don't know what to do with that yet. They're working on it. I was looking at research today. So I'm still wearing my mask. Some places say wear it. Some places don't. It's, it's, it's up in the air. But for me, I don't need it this far with the mask, with the vaccine. And I, okay, that's where I want to go. Pre yeah, and I wanna that. Did you have COVID, if I can ask that? No. No. And, and, and what do you think is why not? Is it the grace of God thing or is it certain processes that you had in place to keep yourself safe. What's interesting is that COVID hit in March of um, 2020. I started filming in, we got together in April, we started filming about May and June. But by me being a dialysis nurse, I work with kidney patients, we work with blood. The, the precautions that we use with that you know, the mask, the gloves and all of that. That's the way I set up my team. And I never put everybody in the room together. 
and seemed like probably six months later, everybody was practicing the same way. My producers, some of them were out of California, Orlando. They were on the computer the whole time. It was just me, my two film crew, and the person I was interviewing. I kept it small. We kept the distance there. We were already ahead of what CDC was saying because I understand infection control. I worked in, in blood, so people say, um, for over 30 years. And through the grace of God, I've never been infected because those things work. And if you look at the flu, the numbers were down because everybody was wearing masks. I mean, those masks are, are helping our health in various ways. I got friends that have terrible allergies. They say their allergies have been the best because we're wearing a mask. So I think when you when when I go back and look at how I have made it thus far, I'm going to continue to do that practice because the evidence has showed me that it works. And my daughter is a new mother and my grandkids are under 12. So they haven't been vaccinated. So I got three grandkids and my daughter that haven't been vaccinated due to, you know, their ages and her being a new mother. Right. Right. So they're still practicing with the mask and everything. And some people are looking at them like they're crazy. And I said, we've made it thus far. That process is working. Don't don't change what you're doing if it works. Okay. So you had three sections of people. So you had the nurses that passed away. Then you had nurses that quit. So yeah. what was the general consistency? Like, People were quitting. Like we don't get this stuff in the news. So you yeah. right you know, on the front line. What what were they? How did they get up to the I'm quitting? Or was it right away? This is coming. I'm getting out the way. Like what's some examples of how people made the decision to quit? It's fear of the unknown. You know, in yeah. medicine, when somebody comes in and they're feeling bad, we examine them, we do the blood, and we come up with a diagnosis. Once you get the diagnosis, you come up with a treatment plan. We can tell you what to do. Now you got to go home and execute. So during this process, we had people coming in. People were dying so fast. We're trying to get um, direction on what's, what's happening. And you're watching CDC. And you have nurses that are getting sick. You got a large percentage of nurses that came down with COVID. People may not talk about it or it wasn't publicized, but it was happening. And if you do your research, you can find, you know, you had a lot more African-American nurses that suffered with COVID. And sometimes, you know, of course, on the news, they talked about our health. You know, some of us may have been overweight. We already have diabetes. We already have heart disease. So we may not do as well as somebody that doesn't have those things and of a different nationality. So it was important to see that the nurses, um, they were so courageous. You know, they're working with patients that they don't really know how not to infect their families. So they're staying in hotels. They're not going home or they're undressing at the door so they don't infect their whole family until they figure out what's going on. So some people just say, hey, um, did, they, did they pay for nurses that didn't go home? Did they get a stipend or that was coming out their personal finances? It, de it depends on the organization. Some hospitals gave their nurses bonuses or their workers. Some companies even did it. But as a whole, it, it didn't happen that way because I talked with several nurses from several several organizations. When when people started getting sick at work with COVID, it wasn't under it wasn't covered under workman's comp, but you got it at your job. You see what right. I'm saying? So right. things have been put in place now for that. Because even when people started getting the vaccination. They a lot of times it took us out for two or three days. People were just down. I know it took me out, and they were getting they were paid. You get you had it too, Antoine, and they were getting paid for those two days off because they knew they saw the trend and they saw that if people get this vaccination, some people is going to hit them hard. But why is it you penalized because you're trying to protect the consumer wherever you work? So it's a lot of stuff been put in place because we've never been through anything like this with organizations too. And that's why people are still teleworking. They're doing a hybrid. They might go to work two days and then work from home. You're just trying to contain this thing. And I think um, it's not over because you can, you can watch what people are still doing. You got, I think, um, I'm trying to think of this company that announced recently that they're going to leave their employees at home. There's several companies that announced it. Yeah, they said yeah, and, 
Yeah. So if you think it's over, you got to watch what's happening around you. Yeah. It's not over if they're saying, hey, I'd rather you stay home and be productive than to come back together. You know, it's liability in it. And then you got to put in all these precautions. We still got to do the social distancing, washing our hands, have all this hand sanitizer. That's financial um, strain on company. And sick time and paying for all of that when people are out. I think it was one of your, definitely a friend, might be a co-worker. She said trauma was also a major reason why nurses were quitting. So does that go back? See, there it is. Trauma led people to leave the profession too. So yes. is that a part of the Antoine question when, like, how do you separate? How do you detox and decompress? Like you're saying, this is the biggest, largest amount of people that you've seen die in your entire career, correct? Right. And with trauma, you know, as, as a nurse, like I say, we go in and do no harm. Usually we can, you know, you diagnose and treat patients, go home. But this was different. We wasn't really prepared for this. We, we didn't go to school for this. Nobody said, hey, we're going through this. Let's meet every Wednesday, debrief and see what's going on. That didn't happen. We were debriefing with each other. And when I say debriefing, crying, kind of having a little mini, you know, session of just like, oh my God, what is going on? Because I can tell you sitting here out of 33 years and working in dialysis, which is a very critical practice, I've never lost a patient. So when you go from that with some of my peers to seeing 18 and 19 people die and you don't have any, you, you, you can't help them. PTSD and different kind of stressors are on us that we haven't been um, counseled for. And I know when Antoine talked about his wife, I'm sure she done heard some stuff that she will never forget because people were dying and some insurances wasn't even paying because it wasn't on the insurance plan. We didn't right. do anything wrong for them. You know, they should have made adjustments to me based on what's going on in the world. And I say, oh, we're not, we're not paying out on this. You know, but people are dealing with all of that today. Today, you know, loved ones being lost, and then insurance not paying, and just a whole lot of things that, as a com country, we, we wasn't prepared. So, as far as volume, I know the numbers have dramatically declined. What does it look like patient-wise in the hospitals? Um, it's hard to say globally because every you know the way the records are, you're not going to get everything, but um. I actually work for the government. Our numbers trend up and down because now the variants are here. So they're they're calling that like um I looked it up before I got on here. Um Delta Plus. <laughs> like mm -hmm. this one is gonna be worse than the other one. So it's like we don't need to hear that right now, but then it's good to be aware that keep doing the things that you're doing. And people still cannot enter our different hospitals here in Virginia without a mask. And you can but only they can come, come in, in and visit. Huh? They can come in the hospital to visit a loved one. Can they do that? Some of them can't. No, they just come in for treatment only. Okay. And I think that's that's best because we don't know who's had the vaccine. You don't have to tell me you had the vaccine. We can we can encourage you to get the vaccine, but that's your right. So at the end of the day, if I keep my mask on and stay protected, then I know I'm okay whether you had your vaccination or not. I feel good Say about that. it. Say that again. <laughs> so that's the thing. I've had so many friends call me later and say, so-and-so tested positive and they're freaking out. And I'm like, did you have your mask? No. I'm like, well, you um, just, you know, pray about it and go and get tested. But, but oh, look, my thing is falling, y'all. <laughs> Why did I think that was the window for real? Nina, what you doing? <laughs> Y'all need to turn my camera off. Give me two seconds. Yeah, turn her camera off so she can get that. <laughs> I, really, I really thought she was sitting in the living room in front in of the window. The window on that's it. right. She's so creative. She's so that's like when you see the faucet in here. Like, oh damn, she in the bathroom. Hey, 
I'm hanging it up. We doing okay, Twan? Did you need to talk? I'm sorry. No, um, you know, when she get when she flow, I just you know I double dutch. I, I yeah, double dutch. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi to all her nursing um yeah. co-workers. Everybody is checking in and supporting her. That's a lot of love. We appreciate you guys stopping in and for all the hard work that you've done in the midst of this storm because us as regular people we struggle <laughs> to understand that oh there yeah. she go back in hawaii there you go there you go i'm back my, my husband he, he put this up for me and um he just chimed in there but um you know what? Glad he wasn't behind it this is why i love doing this live because of stuff just like that. You never never ever know i feel <laughs> like because um like we were saying that because visitors couldn't come in the hospital, oh, yeah. like me working with certain nurses when I had relatives in the hospital, mm -hmm. I felt like the nurses really stepped up their game with communication. They understood yeah. how important that was. And you, the nurse, was all I had. You were the closest Absolutely. thing to my father who's in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So I, I built a lot of healthy relationships and I am so grateful for the wow. nursing staff that I've had on a couple of occasions dealing with some of my loved ones. Like they really kept their promise. I'll call you back. I'll check mm -hmm. on them. So I felt that, like it was an yeah. upgrade in your industry. It really was. That, that really means a lot to me as a nurse leader because people don't know how hard it is to be a nurse. Yeah. Because yeah. we, we, you know, going through nursing school is no joke. Passing state boards is no joke. And then just earning respect, especially when you're African-American. Um, we have to have more degrees. We have to have more certifications. I'm a certified dialysis nurse because without those things, you can't get to the table. People don't listen to you. So we, you, you'll, you'll meet African-American um, people in the medical field that have all of these accolades. And you're like, oh, my God. But that's what it takes. And so when COVID hit, they got to see that other side of us because we... Um, we do so many things, but without having a lot of family in there and a lot of ancillary staff that could not come in, we were very patient centers. So we were taking care of the patient and we were making sure with technology, you guys felt a part of it. But some of the trauma came from when the patients did not do well. They didn't make it and you couldn't be there to hold their hand. The nurses were there throughout that whole process and then just taking it all in for you because Family members, they lost a lot of um, family, family members. members. And not, they didn't get to see them until the funeral. And then when the funeral came, you couldn't do the traditional funeral. People were doing stuff online. And it was, it was hard because we like to say goodbye a certain way by loving on the families and the friends of the person that passes. But as a nurse, I've been to more funerals in my life. I didn't attend any during that time. But maybe one, one of my coworkers um, passed away of a heart attack, not COVID, but still it was hard because you couldn't hug people. You couldn't really show love. You just had to kind of be brief by yourself. And and we still haven't gotten past it. A lot of people, we, we still haven't gotten past it. You know, so you. You. It's, it's, it's been a rough time. So 2020 Year of the Nurse is a project um, that I feel like is going to be part of history. That's my ultimate goal. So 2020 Year of the Nurse. Huh? Is it a series? Was it one no. piece? It's a documentary, but I have probably about 200 hours of footage. And that's why I've, I've submitted it to six film festivals and to PBS because I was able to capture the nurses, how they felt about COVID-19, how leadership was handling it, and also how it collided with Black Lives Matters and just all of the things that were going on that was, you know, unjust for our people collectively and then mental health. Because a lot of people started doing yoga and exercising and talking to counselors that never would do that. But when you're isolated and you're used to being around a lot of people, you don't have anybody to laugh with and talk with. Um, it plays with your mind. It plays with your, your body and everything because, you know, just sitting home working messed me up. I'm used to moving around all day and not being able to, you know, just see your friends and speak and laugh. You're sitting here by yourself meeting after meeting after meeting. But, you know, it showed that 
companies are making more money, more productive because we're just sitting here all day. Every hour you got a meeting, but if you was at your job traditionally, you might work Work maybe five of those eight hours because you're going to run over here and see so-and-so. You're going to run and do this and you're going to run to this meeting. But it's different now. So, yeah. So it's 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 just a whole different mindset. But I think everybody is suffering with some form of, um, you know, isolation, some depression. And we need to talk about it. And I think my nurses, you know, I'm praying for them and always trying to be uh, a listening board for them because people are still going through it, you know, still going right. through it. Right. We still don't know what this is. And now you're saying there's another version. So that's anxiety. If you suffer from anxiety or it can create anxiety because you don't know what's coming up. So I haven't gotten out of what already happened. Now you're saying something else is going to happen. Like a lot of people say, I just want the world to go back the way it was. Never. I don't think it will ever go back the way it was. But we have to learn coping skills and maybe because they're up and out of the house again that can take some of the edge off but we got to deal with it a lot of people passed away you went to the funeral you you just and then you turn around and you leave you couldn't get close you couldn't hug anybody you didn't see them lower them in the ground you don't have that closure that you need with your loved ones so some people are still walking around in the state of shock and then you have people that lost multiple Multiple Absolutely. family members. So it's blow after blow with your friends. Blow after blow. We haven't dealt with that yet. Yeah, and that's what this people. film. This what this film will talk about the process, and then at the end, it'll sum up basically where we're at as a country. And I think a lot of people are walking around with guilt and some remorse because you want to do something, but you don't know what to do. So you have to find a way to um, be part of the solution. Because you think about as an African-American community, our biggest hospital is our churches. And a lot of our churches have been shut down, right. have been right. under financial strain. And we don't know when we're going to get back to being able to go to church. You know, on Sunday, then you got choir practice, you got all those things that, that we love and that gives that us... Um, right. Yes, absolutely. That builds us up. So... Going back to normal, it's a new norm. And I think that's where a lot of people are falling short. They need to figure out, okay, I'm not going to be able to do this, but let me see what the other option is. Because they're waiting and waiting and waiting. And it's, it's not going to, we're not going back there because of the way economics is as well. I saw a statistic, um, one of my um, co-workers, I think she said, I don't know the statistic, I might be off, but she's on here, Marika. I think it's about 13% of African-American um, people want to go back to work. It's it, like they don't want to go back because through the pandemic, they realized how undervalued, <laughs> look at Antoine, how undervalued they were. And they're like, okay, if I can get unemployment, which is more than when I'm working my butt off, and then if I can start my own business and make more money and still and, and be happier, why am I going back there? So now they're bonusing people at restaurants to come back, you know, just regular restaurants. And it's like, why weren't you paying them that anyway? Why now you can find the funds after the pandemic to pay them and you're not, you, you know, they've been getting paid really low when you do a comparison. So I think this is an opportunity to stand up together and make them move and do the things they need to do for us as a community, you know, and as people. So you're seeing a big shift in that because these young people, they're like, no, I'm not going back for pennies and can't get time off. But um, if I stay on unemployment, instead of making 20,000 or 25, I'm making 35 or 40,000, you know, so and I can have an under the table hustle. So I absolutely. can make my money bigger. Yeah. We always got an under the table hustle. That that's, you you got to have more than one stream of income. Liz, you 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 way behind the eight ball. I think in the Bible it says at least seven. Seven what? Seven. Streams of income. Seven streams of income. Mm -hmm. But see, you don't work them all. Yeah, to, look, my my Bible scholars on here. They can they can find it from the Kim and Sean, the deacons. But it's just so important because some income you don't you don't have to um. 
see Marika just put only three percent of black people really? want to return to work. Very low. But um you you well, gotta have income that's passive, like rental properties, stocks and bonds. You can you know be selling something on Amazon, then you got your work that requires you to drive to work right. and be in the office and all of that. So I mean and you got that residual income that makes money while you're sleeping. That's right. When you just right. check your phone, or you hear that little ching ching going, that ching, right? You hear that ching. Yeah, yeah. I wake up with it. You wake up with it. My phone just did a ching, but it wasn't residual income. Don't wake me up. That's a pet peeve. But if I hear that noise, I'm gonna wake up for it. But now I expect to hear that noise, so it's not much as a surprise. I deserve to hear that noise. So that's that's right. And we. We as a um, culture, we spend the most money on everything. So I feel like um, we can spend it in each other's businesses and promote each other too. So, Tuan, did you have a question? <laughs> no, no. I was saying that my phone just actually dinged, but that was a text no message. Money. Not a, that was know, me that making a request but, for money from you. <laughs> but I do know people that have actually that actually made more money during the pandemic than they did, you know, when they were working. And, and they were, because it, it kind of brought out the hustler spirit in a lot of us. Right, I gotta live. Fear will make, fear will make you do that because yeah. a lot of times we don't do our um, business because of fear, but when you get pushed to the wall, you're coming out fighting. So a lot yeah. of people, they like, I've been wanting to start this business forever. And girl, it took off because now it's just a different mindset. And I pray that um, we continue to hustle like this because it's not going to go back to the old way. Even movies to me, the movie theaters are opening, but you can count the people in them. You, you, you're more comfortable at home because you can stop it and run and get something to eat. And then you can, you know, you can you go to back and save it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can right. put in your favorites and watch it on your day off. So they've made it so convenient. And you have we have a special announcement. Go ahead, Tuan. I was just going to say you have you have situations like the good old state of Maryland where here we are almost a year and a half into the pandemic and people still haven't received unemployment. Unemployment. So right. it has required you to figure out a way, hopefully legal, to make, $40. <laughs> to, on to make sure that your bills have been paid. Um, you know, fortunately, um, you know, the government stopped people from getting evicted. You know, they had that rule. You know, now that, you know, that's even as of today, July the 1st, I think that's even being lifted. So there are people wow. that, you know, are still out of jobs and, you know, the government's not doing what they have to do. The state of Maryland is taking away that extra $300 thing or whatever it is. So people are coming out of this, you know, in a lot, a lot of cases, you know, without the help that they needed. So it's it's required mm -hmm. people to, you know, find some, you know, some some different ways to, to make that money. Exactly. To. Exactly. And that's why you see more entrepreneurs than you've ever seen, especially women, because women um, you know, a lot of times are the head of the household. These kids, they've been home <laughs> over a year. And when they're home, they're eating up everything that's not nailed down. And they talk about the grocery bill and all of that stuff. So but you, you gotta be, yeah, you got to be strategic. Yeah, the children yeah. get food stamps here. Yeah, um, get it, got it, good. So in my history of being on Access Granted, sometimes Tawn and I do different shows. But as far as me being on the show, I'm seeing the most comments pop up that I've ever seen. Who are these people talking to you and it's loving you like that? Well, I can't see it in the chat over oh, here, but yeah. I can see some of them pop up. Some of my yeah. nurses, nurses that are in the project, my producers, and also um, Get It Got It Good is up your way. And she's always, they've always supported me. And it's just been amazing because, um, you know, when you're a female out here trying to do something, especially a nurse turned filmmaker, um, I think it's it's inspiring for people that like we're talking entrepreneurship that may be getting into something that don't look like what they're trained to do. And so it's just important. Hey Maria, it's just and it's important. a testimony. It's a testimony of who you are. All these people talking. Thank you. Like that's a lot of love, right? And then the husband done scooped down and said to me, You are one loved blessing. <laughs> 
little little black in, in, individual here. So I salute that. Without you saying anything, just looking at Thank all you. the support that speaks volumes of who oh. you are. So I'm glad to get that you get to live that life. And they all yes. excited you the explanation points and claps and thank you guys for, for joining us along with her. So the question that I shouldn't ask, but I wanna know. Nina, you didn't pick that one off the show. Oh, I'm sorry, Twan. Uh, here we go. I thought she was gone. No, and this isn't even important, but I'm still tripping off the fact that that's not really her living room right there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She's on honeymoon, she's somewhere. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually in my office and behind me on my board is all of my work that I have to do. So I needed to cover it up because you guys would have been distracted. My daughter told me, uh-uh, because people are going to be looking at all your stuff. And, you know, because I hate to say it, I'm, I'm one of them um, adults that have ADHD. I'm all over the board. Me but uh, it, com it comes together. Huh? I said me too. I would have been all in your background. Like, what is that book? Yeah. Yeah, like, so I had to kind of hide it. You know, my goals are there. Is is my birthday is in a few days. This is seventh month of the year, so it's stuff you gotta make happen before the year is out. So when's you know, your you birthday? Tomorrow. So you gotta make it happen. Your birthday's tomorrow? No, I'm saying you're not know, promised tomorrow. No, my birthday oh, is yeah, seven. No, not at all. Yeah, my birthday is July seventh. I'll be fifty seven. So okay. I'm excited, you know, getting married at this age too is is um adventurous. So I got you, you were a nurse for 30 so. years. I didn't want to ask you how old you were. <laughs> Thanks for that. And and that's not a, a lot of years for I mean for you to have accomplished what you've accomplished, you know. Some yeah. people have to retire from what they were doing so they can go to the next phase of their life, and your ADD is doing it all at one time. So that's but a good see, thing. Yeah, and if you if you smart when you got the capital, that's when you transition. Because I'm retiring from the government in like four years and three months. So when I'm done, the foundation for closing production, which is my production company, should be truly established. And and I've worked with some amazing people already. And like I was saying, a lot of the projects I've never broke bread with any other people, and I put money on the table because I believed in them, and they they came through for me. They came through. So um. I'm I'm just that type of person because I pray a lot and I believe God will lead me, you know, the good people and my production team that I've um, worked with on this project, um, William Roebuck and um, different people out of California and my AD, Paris boys. I mean, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here because they have the know-how, but I understand processes and procedures and I'm I'm a lifelong learner. So I can learn anything if you just give me the opportunity. That's nice. Lifelong learner. Who got a friend named Tequila? Stop playing. I see it. Look, that, that's my girl, Tequila. Check this out. Tequila Harron Smith. That's our little running joke. That's her name. And she is a phenomenal nurse with me as well. So most of everybody getting on here are my nurses that I work with, and they're, they're been supporting me all the way. And um, and, um it's, it's a blessing. blessing. Okay, so I need to ask you some stuff. If you can answer it, it good. If you can't, no, I don't want okay. you to jeopardize any of your employment or whatever else. So, as a nurse in the middle of COVID, did you personal think, personally think, you're a process girl? Like as it was going, there were not many processes in the beginning. Do you mm -hmm. feel like we've we've evened out? Like the things that you're doing to treat COVID is better than it was when it started. Oh, absolutely. I think when we had different leadership in the White House, um, things were were so disorganized. We wasn't getting the full story. Was We wasn't able to look at the, the statistics and the evidence. You have to remember nurses and physicians, we're evidence-based practice. You know, we got to see the research and look at the numbers before we're going to apply it to a patient and to, you know, what needs to be worked on. So it's really important now that we have new leadership we're able to see a lot of the numbers. We're able to get information that was blocked from CDC coming out to the public, you know, when we had different leadership. So now you have what you need to execute. But with this new um, variant coming, we have to, you know, they're trying to do the research now to see how we can get in front of this. And I think we're in a better position. So we as the, as the community, 
We just need to follow these, still those guidelines, whatever your state is telling you to do. And Virginia is changing all the time. So I'm always hearing, and my daughter's a teacher too. So she's always, you know, keeping up with what's going on for her students and for herself and, you know, my grandkids. So we're in a much better place, but people have to, um, if they decide to get the vaccine, get the vaccine. If you decide not to get the vaccine, we hope you're going to protect yourself because we're on an honor system. It's a sign up say if you took the vaccine, you don't need your mask. We don't know. In Sam's, right. I see him in Sam's now. Okay. <laughs> so is the CDC and the WHO, are they your Bible-like resources? They're, they're some of my main go-tos, yes. They are yes. your main go-tos. Yeah. So as you says, the CDC says there is a percentage of people that will, the, the chances of getting healed after you get COVID, my number's going to be wrong. I think it's 93%, 93 or 95, something like that. But the change, Go ahead. are you seeing that people are getting COVID again? Are you starting to see that again? People that's been vaccinated. Not in high numbers. Not in, not high, in numbers. high numbers. We, we, we've had people to get it. I'm not saying in Virginia, but not in high numbers. And that's what you have to look at when you look at research. If you got millions of people that's had the vaccination and we got 50 people that have um, gotten COVID after the vaccine, you have to look at which vaccine. You got to look at that population of that person that got it. All of that. That's, that's why um, contact tracing, all of that is important. You know, is it somebody that's in a nursing home? Is it somebody that's incarcerated or is it somebody that's living by themselves? And then the research starts again, like, you know, this person shouldn't have got it if, they, if they're just living by themselves. So we have to look at all those things from the beginning, you know, how long it lives on the surface and then how do you clean that particular surface area, whether it's on the grocery, but, you know, so you have to really do that tracing and then go back and see the commonalities in all of it. Do you like doing that? Like looking at the statistics coming up with hypothesis? I love research because I can tell you from experience, you always go in and thinking you know what it is. You know, yeah. You go and really, really you go into it to prove your point. But nine times out of ten, you come out of it learning saying, Wow, I never really? would have thought. Yeah. I never would have thought that. So that's why I love research because you always go in like trying to prove something to somebody else. But in the end of the day, you you get the numbers and you realize that's just the way you think. But now we're looking at a pool of people. And yeah, so it's important to look at the research. And, and you guys were talking before I came on about different stories that come out and are they true or are they true. false and different things like that. You have to make sure you're looking at a, a reliable resource because if not, then you're spreading bad gossip that could come back on you. So it's just important to really do the research and use that as your support when you talk about it. And, and we... Uh -huh. have to stop believing everything that we see on the internet and everything. I put a post up on Facebook and I uh, this was like two weeks ago and I said, I hate having a conversation with people and they keep saying, well, they said this and they said that. And you said, who is that? And, and when you ask them who they is, well, who is they? Right. Who, who, who are these people? That are telling you that if you if you get vaccinated, your left arm is going to fall off and you're going to lose three toes. Like, where are you getting your information from? It's very important that you don't listen to people that have no clue. And, and it's very important that you cross reference. You can't right. have one source. But, but what happens with us is we have so many people that think that they know everything that don't really know nothing. Like, you know, that story about you can you can tell somebody something and that person will tell them by the time it gets it to the change. person. Totally different. Yeah. That's the way. That's the way we handle the vaccine. You know, the the whole COVID situation. Everything was well. This person said, and that person said. I don't want to hear what your barber said about COVID because <laughs> your the barber's that's not exactly a right. expert. And that's a lot. A lot of times, that's where they're getting their information from. And and the that's why it's so important when you're dealing with medical things to go to the medical team, whether it's a nurse, a doctor, and and they will send you research articles and information so you can make your own decision you know right. we, we 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 talk about 
you know, think about high blood pressure, diabetes. We can say eat right, exercise, this, that, and the third. But when you we send you articles that, that give you statistics on how many of us have it and why we have it and what the outcome is, then you, you'll make your decision like, look, I don't want to be on insulin if all I need to do is walk every evening and, and try to cut back on fried foods and this and that. Whatever you do, that's on you because that's your life. That's your journey. And I tell my husband all the time, my happy may not be your happy. Mm. So some people, you know, eating and partying and, and not exercising, that's their happy. But then at the end of the day, you, you're exercising and you're saying, why am I falling apart? Because you're happy. <laughs> that's what it equal at the end. So I let people live their life and I try to educate, share information and whatever they do is it always going to come back in full, full circle. You know, they're going to so come back. So would you have a different conversation if you was in the hospital versus talking to somebody at home? Nurses have access to information that maybe the regular person doesn't have. Well, Medical. basically... I've been so fortunate for people to um, deem me as a renal specialist because I'm certified. So anytime somebody has hypertension, diabetes, um, they may end up on dialysis at some point in their life if they don't manage their blood pressure and diabetes because it affects the kidneys really hard. So a lot so of renal, patients... I want to stop you. Sorry. Define renal, please. That has to do she with kidneys. That has kidney. to do with yeah. kidneys. Okay. You know, hear people say I have kidney problems, or, you know, but basically I, I try to educate them on different things and they make those decisions. So I'm always getting calls, you know, they say I'm borderline diabetic. Is that going to is that going to mess up my kidneys? I say over time it could have an impact and I try to educate them on different lab values that they need to look at because we can go online, all of us and look at our labs every day. You know, it's a, our chart is available online now. So, you know, we kind of review their labs together and I'll have them look at certain things on a monthly basis or quarterly basis to make sure, you know, their blood pressure is not going up, their blood sugar is not going up and different markers that identify kidney failure, you know, as a possibility. So it's just really important to educate people. And I talk to people in the community. I talk to patients at the hospital. I talk to my peers because. A nurse is a nurse, but we, we're specialized. You got nurses that work in pediatrics, geriatrics, hemodialysis. We have some computer specialists. Um, some nurses, they don't do anything but develop processes and charting for us so that we can, you know, be able to build and all that stuff. It's, it's various specialties. So it's just really important to know that, you know, I get people whipping up their shirt all the time or showing me stuff. And I'm like, I'm a renal nurse, but. Okay, and I try to help you. Okay, we, we gotta we gotta talk about this con this comment right here from Marika. She says everyone ain't ready for this information we're about to give. Don't ask a nurse unless you want the truth. So That's other than right. diabetes, I never hear how to have healthy kidneys. <laughs> right, and that's that's why the Kidney Foundation is so instrumental in your community. They have um, different programs where they um, hold health fairs, where they check your blood sugar, your urine and all of that to see if you possibly at risk for kidney disease. And I volunteer with that organization as well. So that's something to always, you know, you feel free to reach out to me or, you know, call the Kidney Foundation and Kidney website. Kidney Foundation website is amazing. It goes over a lot of things. And I've connected with a lot of people all over the country with kidney disease because um, kidney month is in March and it's a huge campaign to educate you and get checked out. So that's real important. Is and, the kidney um, the one that looks like a llama bean? Yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. So yeah. eat llama bean. The, the vegetable that looks like the body part is the one that helps it. Do you do any holistic or non-prescription type remedies, <laughs> cures, advice? Um, it's funny that you say that, but we're not gonna get into that in depth tonight. But I just All got into right. the, I just got into the cannabis um education world. Yep. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And <laughs> yes. I just me and me and my husband, we just started a um consulting company called Canna Roots Consulting. And basically my goal is to educate nurses and physicians about um, cannabis that can be used to treat patients other than using opioids. So at this time, it's, it's, it's really um, 
a tug of war because um, of different um, guidelines, but it should always be um, a nurse's primary role to advocate for the patient. And there are patients out here that don't want to take opioids. They, and they are already using cannabis or marijuana to treat themselves. But my concern is if it's good marijuana to where it's not causing other problems with the body. But the medical marijuana, we know exactly what's in it. Just like you look on the back of your sugar, you know exactly what's all in that ingredients. Why are y'all laughing? <laughs> in Nina. other words, Gina, there ain't no marijuana that you bought down on North and Pennsylvania. You know, regular weed ain't really around. You know, everything is kind of medicinal, really. It has really taken over. So it ain't nothing down there on North Avenue. They got it from the dispensary. Not that I know. As you were saying, Robin. No, but it's okay that you know that because I know Maryland and Washington, they way ahead of Virginia. But as a um, consultant, you know, I can consult with patients all over because um, we have what they call a compact license. And any information that I'm given is, is founded. It's not going to be my opinion. And then I have websites that um, I use to come up with a formula. Like if somebody's got having migraines and they're on different medicine, they don't want, it's not helping, but they're already using cannabis. I just don't want people using cannabis that may not be healthy for their body holistically because being in Reno, as long as I have, I've taken care of patients, kidneys that fail from them using different herbs for years. But then when their kidneys fail, we really didn't know how to work with them because we didn't know really what they had been putting in their body, you know, for that period of time. So, you know, herbs and different things have been around forever. But now, you know, people are really, the statistics show that people over 50 are the highest cannabis users. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> and a lot of people think, you know, and you, you, when you process it, you say, you know, people, it just, you know, people, it's a stigma to it or they just getting high. They just having fun. But you don't stress them out all week. They are a little, it's for anxiety. They're a little depressed. They are, they're dealing with mental issues. It can be a they diagnosis. Have to to sleep. They have to be forced. They have alphabets, AC, ADD, ADHD. They have to be literally knocked out to go to sleep. <laughs> to go to sl to slow that mind down. Yeah. And so cannabis is a huge, um, I don't want to say business. But it's, it, it does not affect the body and the organs like all the opioids and all the medicine that we're putting in now. And that's the place we have to get to on a serious level with the physicians and stuff. So that's my charge right now is to educate physicians so that they're comfortable saying, OK, I might recommend this to a patient. Let's see what happens. But the nurse is going to be instrumental in carrying out the care plan and making sure that that patient is reporting what they need and then going back to the doctor saying, hey, this is not working. Go ahead and put it back on the op opioids. Or this is working. Let's try this. So um, it's, it's, it's huge for me because my mom has had knee surgery and she's been through a lot of pain. And that's what kind of put me on the path of uh, investing time and education in cannabis. That's my next adventure. So. Nice. So project-wise, film-wise, do you already know what your next one's going to be? Um, I really want to make 2020 Year of the Nurse into like a series because I have so much footage and I was blessed to catch it in real time with these nurses, real time. And as you, um, as the film festivals roll out and I feel confident we're going to um, be selected, when it starts to premiere, people are going to be amazed at what these nurses are expressing because nobody's asking us what we think, how we feel. They're talking right. for us. And it's really right. important. Yeah. And I think there are so many nurses that feel undervalued. Like Ms. Moore was saying about, they really don't want to hear what we have to say because now once I talk, we got to come up with a solution to the problem. You know, some, some people say, you know, they, they don't want to really hear your complaint or your concerns because now it means we have to come up with a plan to help the situation. And I think um, we have to realize that we need our nurses because um, if not, <laughs> when we get older, who's going to be taking care of us? So we need to embrace the nurses, encourage them and, and let them know we appreciate what they've done and the nurses that have been lost. It's been devastating to just be detached from everybody now and nurse nurses month came and that should be like the biggest celebration 
Uh -huh. That should have been huge. That se celebration, Nurses Month, Nurses Week, that should have been huge. We and still waiting on it. all of that. That should if somebody, the world should have hired me for that. Because this is Look. the time when, when you guys are amazing and need to be recognized. Like this ain't time to yeah. be quiet. That's, you know? that's what I'm saying. So I tried to start my interviews um May 6th, and I've done about six of them. And then still doing them now in July, which is a testament to the nurses. And that's my goal to continue to salute them as I roll this project out. And and my vision is when when we went in STEM festivals and they premiered, I I hope I hope my nurses come out and we have an opportunity to discuss this because um we didn't we didn't sign up for what we went through, but we didn't leave either. We're still here. Right, still going. Is there yeah. a question? that I should have asked you that I didn't or any information that you want to make sure you get out while you got all these people watching? Well, I just think it's important for the nurses to stay present and be at the table because nobody can articulate when you see this film, what we've been through with COVID, with discrimination and also mental health that, that, it's still it's, it's, it's in us because it hasn't been addressed. It hasn't been addressed. And to it's like some police officers, they, they may be a police officer for 25 years and never pull their gun. And people be like, you know, that's kind of weird. But that's that's OK, because that's kind of normal. People don't expect to keep pulling their gun and shooting somebody. They're able to defuse it and so forth. So with nursing, when you had this transition with all these patients dying and not having debriefing and not being able to sit with the family and love on them and tell them, you know, just share that. That's all inside. So my thing is that I'm hoping that our nurses will get the help that they need to continue this journey. And also that people will salute them for the job that they've done and for the nurses that have been lost because their families are devastated because you know, they, that that's their calling. And my nurses that were on the front line, they're still on the front line right now. So I, I'm checking on them. They're letting me know what they're doing because it's not over. So don't underestimate what we're going through, but just know when you see a nurse, love a nurse. And I always say, you know, you go to Bush Gardens and all these different theme parks, the firemen and the policemen get in free nurses. You know, we, we, it's a lot of y'all. It's a lot of nurses. Yes. Yes, because the population is huge and we still are outnumbered. There's going to be a huge shortage of nurses really, really soon, even without COVID. I even without that, COVID. I always Why? say that when you go to the hospital, you see the nurses before you see the doctor and you see the nurses way more than you see the doctor. That's and right. I met some doctors that I don't even know what they're talking about or I'm not feeling <laughs> their bedside. Right. I don't even want to talk. I want to talk to the nurse. Right. I want right. to talk. Yeah, I've, I've been in the hospital for four days and I saw the doctor the day that I got there and the day that I left. But I saw my nurses every all day through. all throughout the day, several times a day. So, yeah, right. I, like I said, I, I always had a great respect. But um, the way that you guys performed and stepped up and did everything, you know, during the pandemic, you know, just gave me a whole new respect for you guys. I, I really appreciate it. So for those of us that won't have the privilege of going to film festivals, once you, uh, you know, once, because we're going to claim that, we know that that's going to happen. That's right. Um, yep. how, will, how will we, yeah, absolutely. How will we get to see um, 2020, the year of the nurse, or is that still to be determined? Well, basically, the way it works with the film festivals, once we're selected, then it's going to be premiered probably on the East Coast and the West Coast. And with what's going on with COVID, the beauty for me, I would love to be in person and on the stage after the shows to answer questions. But with technology, I'm praying, you know, that it's, it's online because the audience will be bigger. Yeah. People can watch it. And then after they have the same type dialogue, they can talk about things that happen in the movie and my nurses will be available to answer questions because you will hear their stories. Um, I really didn't want to be in it. I really wanted just to direct it, but you know, I've been in it a long time. So I had some stories that I shared. And the beauty of this is that none of my nurses except the twin nurses were interviewed together. So when I um, had the opportunity to share this with some of the nurses that were in it to review it, 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 it blew everybody away because you think you know what people are going to say because I asked all the nurses the same question. 
they've all had different experiences. And you don't think about discrimination in nursing, but it's powerful. It's really powerful. So um, a lot of a lot of tears, some laughter, but a lot of education and just learning um, how you how you worked as a black nurse during this time, and you had a black son, and black men were being killed, and people were being killed. So it, it it took a lot of courage to continue to do the things that they did. Yeah, and and it's funny that you said that because now that I think about it, like in the midst of all of that stuff that was going on with the pandemic, we still had so much other real, well, other world stuff that was going Absol on. Absolutely, absolutely. And and one of my nurses, she talked about you know we were focused on COVID. But people were dying of heart attacks and strokes, right, you right. know, car collisions. Right. It was just a different time. And and those people are still mourning today because they didn't get that time with their family and different things like that. Because if it wasn't COVID, you know, it was diminished. But life is life. You don't want to lose not one person. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to this documentary. Um I pray that God blesses you to make it as big as you haven't even began to imagine yet, because I feel like it's a story that needs to be told. Um, Absolutely. And, and, you know, anything that we can do here on our end to help you continue to spread that, um, just let me know, let Nina know, and, and we're, we're here for you. Definitely. I appreciate, I appreciate you. Um, yeah. I, appreciate I will keep it. you guys updated. And I hope that everybody that's watching, you know, will go to YouTube and watch 2020 Year of the Nurse and also um, subscribe to the page for free. And I'll be putting in updates because I think July 6th, Bronson Film Festival will be the first film festival. And they're going to be on Facebook Live selecting the category. So I'm praying that our documentary will be picked because hey, yeah, I have yeah. a... Hmm? Keep, keep, me, keep me informed on that. I would love to see that live if they... Yeah. Keep, okay. keep Nina in the loop too. That's her sign language. Keep me as in the loop. Too. Okay. <laughs> yes. I, I would definitely um be posting that to you guys and then on Facebook because I'm just I'm just excited and I, I this was a God um project. God woke me up one night and just kind of told me what I needed to do. And people were just coming giving me information and finally um me and my um production team put it together and it's just it's just been a blessing. The YouTube clip that you showed, it wasn't very clear on here, but it, we we did a great job on it to be such on a small budget. We, you know, the, the film team, they did a great job. So um, I'm just excited. I'm so proud to be a nurse. I tell you, you know. And I'll make sure I share that on our platform so that people can, that either uh, couldn't see it clearly or didn't tune in tonight that they can actually see it before we go. Well, I appreciate so, y'all um, so much. Before Nina gives her closing spiel, <laughs> um, let everyone know how they can follow you. In my cup, 2020, you're the nurse. I know, that's no, because it's in the letters. Lift it up some. There we go. Oh, yeah. There Is you it? go. Yes, yeah. the nurse. Yes, yes. Um, on Facebook, it's Close the Productions. <laughs> And that's my production company. And then 2020 Year of the Nurse. And then my name, Robin Roots. So I have three different pages. And then on my IG page, Close the Productions. And also 2020 Year of the Nurse. And to see the project, go to YouTube. And it's under uh, 2020 Year of the Nurse. And please comment. Good, bad, or indifference. We want to hear it all. And then um, subscribe to the page. Because um, I'll probably start posting on that page as the film festivals start rolling out. I think we got two in July that's rolling out, two in August and in September. And I'm gonna be speaking in Texas, Dallas, Texas in October in reference to 2020 Year of the Nurse. Um, so working on that. So I'm just excited because like I say, the nurses, they just haven't been um, properly rewarded for all that they've done. I know people might say, well, that's their job, but it's, it's not a job, it's a call. That ain't nobody's and, job like that. Yeah. If we so got presented with volume, um, trauma, uh, staying at a hotel instead of going home, being separated from your family for weeks or months, like that doesn't fit in anybody's job role. They didn't have to do that. And people got sick leave. They could have took it. 
and yep. rode their vacation pay out for as long as they could. They could have went right. on unemployment. So they right. chose to be right there on that front line. It's kind of changing how we think about front line. Like you said, it's not always your police officers, your right. firemen. It is that hospital personnel. And it's about 20 jobs that happen in a hospital. So you, you guys, you guys, I can't say enough. I cannot. Thank you all so lives, much. Literally. And my, I know my, my job nurses don't have me saving lives. <laughs> Well, I know my, my nurses. My, job is my life flat. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, well, I know my nurses it. appreciate y'all because um, you know, you work hard and people just they may not say thank you or anything. You just keep going because you know why you chose the profession that you're in. And um, I'm just grateful and I appreciate y'all so much. Thanks for reaching out, Antoine and Trey Cheney, you know, hooking me up with some amazing people. And um, oh, I'm just I'm just grateful. Yeah, absolutely. Nina? Hmm. So just to recap, you can follow her with on the Year of the Nurse on YouTube so you can watch it. Be sure to subscribe so you'll get all the updates. You have the... 2020, the Year of the Nurse. 2020, Year, year of the, the nurse. nurse. Yeah, make sure you put that 2020. 2020 is first. 2020 is first. Yes. 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 Got you. Like that 20 over top of your... Right, I got you. Shout out and then there. Facebook... <laughs> You got a 2020 The Year to Nurse page on Facebook. You also yes. have Robin. Robin, has your page been updated with your new last name or? Well, it's it's updated with Roots, but if you put in Robin Jones, Roots, I'll it. still pop up because it was a way I figured out how to show that. And uh, so you, people, people have been able to find me and I get, I've gotten two messages this past weekend for projects. So a lot of my work comes off of Facebook. It's, it's, it's just amazing. Amazing. Robin's a praying woman. So prayers are needed that they are successful in getting nominated to show their film at the what? The well premiering at the film festival. And when you go to film festivals, you want all the big networks there. They're looking. And I'm I'm expecting somebody to say, Hey, this is fire. Let's let's look at this. And they ask that question, Do you have any more footage? I got plenty. And I caught it in real time. That's our yeah. collective prayer for you. We need that to happen. Please. That's our heart's desire. Oh, On behalf so of much. Mr. Antoine and Nina, the original party girl. Party girl. Yes, granted, we thank you and your crew to Kayla and them for spending this moment in time with us. And we wish you the very best on all of your projects and endeavors. Thank you so much. It really was a thank pleasure so meeting much. you. And I thank hope you, you get everything you need. And thank you, thank you. God bless y'all for real, for real. Because y'all save lives, you know. I mean, like everybody can't say that. So I appreciate that. And 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 two things. And that, I got <laughs> two two things that I should have done at the beginning of the show before um, we got into this. Um, I want to send prayers to the families of the um, the building collapsed down in Florida. Yes. Um, yes. They actually found a four-year-old and a ten-year-old yesterday, and that hurt my heart. Um, there's oh, still man. over there's still over a hundred people that they haven't found, oh. and you know they're still calling it, uh, you know, recovery and whatever that word is. Um, but you know, I'm just, so just, sorry. Prayers, yeah, yeah. just prayers out to them, and I'm also um, I want to send um, prayers and thoughts out to the family of that young woman who was down in Annapolis the other day for her and son, for her son being inducted into the Naval Academy and was killed by stray bullets from a shooting that happened a half a block away. Oh my goodness. Mm. Come to the Naval Academy to see your son get inducted and you lose your life. That happened on Tuesday. Um, shout out to her son because he did decide to stay and he was actually inducted um, on Wednesday. Um, and shout out to the Naval Academy for just embracing him and the family the way that they did. But I mean, two absolutely mm -hmm. amazing tra tragedies, and I definitely wanted to, um, you know, to, to send our thoughts and prayers out to them on that as yes. well. Definitely. Shout out to the families that have passed that suffered from a loss during yeah. COVID, and they know that your nurses have really, they really did the best they can. They really, really tried to um, give your loved one what they needed up until yeah. the end. Now, Twan. End the show on something that's going to make somebody smile. Fix it. 
Um, I don't know what you're talking about, Nina. <laughs> well, we just you know, talked you know, about two very sad incidents. We try to walk away for food for thought. Uh, um, 2020 year the nurse is coming. 2020 year the nurse <laughs> is coming, and we salute our nurses that showed out, showed up, and showed out in 2020. And this is not a movie; it is a movement. So moving movement. forward, they're gonna always get saluted. So that's that's part of my good mission. save, Robin. Good save, good save Robin. Because I didn't know what she was talking about. I would have thought of something, but you can't end it any better than that. Um, a shout out to all of your all of your nurses and and people that you know that chimed in with us. We really appreciate you guys. Thanks to everybody that's up on Facebook Live. We love y'all. Um, Thank y'all so much for the opportunity. Baltimore is having its fifth rainstorm of the day as I'm hearing outside the window now. So um, shut this Stop down. Stop talking. <laughs> you have to kill it. Man, thank, thank you, guys. Yeah. All right. You like thank you. Are we out of here? Bye -bye. Tequila, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, now. guys, for tuning in. Love you guys. Right, love you, love you back. Bye -bye. Have a good one. Cannabis lives. <laughs>